torn ACL. Ooh, ouch. Oh, and now we're live. Good job. Good job, <laughs> idiot. <laughs> no, we're just, I just figured we'd uh, uh, we'd start it a, a little bit live early, and uh, just so you guys uh, uh, know, w waiting for one more, but uh, almost starting live with torn ACLs and beard. Not, but uh, I sent him a link, so uh, we'll see what happens. Okay. So, anyways, um, welcome to uh, movies galore of uh, or I inside movies galore. Uh, um, I'm your host, David Streggy. Unfortunately, before the show, I ended up sawing Dane in half, so um, it's gonna it was be only fair. Before, uh, before we put the pieces of him back together, unfortunately, yeah. folks. So, uh, um, but uh, in any case, I am here. Um, Ron Fitzgerald, uh, welcome to the show. Hello, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing okay. Are we good? So, definitely hear you. So... Perfect. Um, why don't we start where uh, where you you're from, uh, Ron? Uh, 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 honest, let's uh, let's give uh, let's give our audience uh, a little bit about your background. Yeah, uh, most you? people think I'm from cars, but I'm actually from Chicago. Okay. <laughs> uh, we're here out of the Midwest, but I mean, I, I travel all over the world, you know. And that's um, film work, and then a lot of the stuff I've done here. And then, as far as my work in the Gothic Illusionist, I have performed from Hollywood to Hong Kong uh, and to hell and back, literally. I last, last year on Double Friday in October, I, Queen, I was the honorary mayor of Hell, Michigan. Which is always fun because they impeach you, which should happen to every politician, truly. So <laughs> it was a good time. It was very fun. I so I literally got to perform in hell. And you know, even though there are a few few other gigs in my career, I would put as hell gigs. Uh, that was the, literally the hell gig. So I performed all over the place. So, but based out of Chicago, uh, at least for, uh, until they until I get some sort of gothic mansion in the Hollywood Hills and. And, and, and all <laughs> awesome so um why don't we start with uh, the your first film how did you get your uh, first fi uh, uh, film with um, the item um, I, I understand you played a character called dr. Odie yes dr. Odie was really cool the, the original idea in the item was well it, this is how it went to Sundance and, and it went to, to Toronto and, and, and a bunch of other film festivals uh, around the globe before its uh, eventual uh, re released video and it didn't get a theatrical release but it did, it did get a worldwide uh, release on video and uh, it's a really interesting weird film that the the best way to describe it is how the, the Sundance people described it at the screenings which was it's like Quentin Tarantino on acid, and that's the So if you want to see something that's Quentin Tarantino on acid, and it's a fun, weird, super weird ride, go find the item. And uh, it's made by Dan Clark, and he wrote it, he directed it, he's one of the stars of the film, and it's kind of a smaller ensemble cast. And I played Dr. Odie, and Dr. Odie, the original idea for him was, you know, 50 lab coat-ish something, and, um, and then they decided they wanted to do a lot, something a lot funkier with it. And that's when Dan called me because we had worked together in, in you know, in, in some cable television projects we had made, you know, long before that, before he had gone to L.A. and started to, to make things. He worked in television largely and still does, but but had made uh, the item. And and so they, when they wanted to do something funky, he called me um, because at the time it was, it was even before I had, I had shaved my head and everything, I, you know, and I had long blonde hair and they dressed me in this silver PVC suit, and it was just like, it was like this this weird doctor that's super intelligent and has this mysterious item for them that he meets them in the desert to sell them, and, and things go awry and weird from that, um, but they want to do something different, and he looks like he just, like he was on his way to a rave and stopped to 
make this transaction. That's what was really, it's really interesting. And it was really fun, but, but I got into the way, the way I found myself in, you know, on a movie set and in a movie in the first place was the fact that um, I had him and another director friend about the same time, actually, uh, he and, and John Machago, who and John has gone on to make a bunch of other films that I'm in and, and beyond that. Uh, and, and is known for all the Killjoy movies he's done for Full Moon most recently. And, um, and those two had both come to me, and it was because of the persona I had created and my look that I put together at that sort of the Gothic Illusion show, and the fact that I'd studied theater and acting in preparation for that to, you know, for the stage, that they came to me and said, well, you have an acting background and you have all this and you have this, this weird look. Would you like to be in my horror film? And I said, yes, because I... That's part of the influence of, of, of the Gothic Illusion show is it's horror and the paranormal and the occult and, you know, some comic book fun and all kinds of weird stuff and some dark sci-fi. And that that is all a huge influence on, on my work on stage with the actual illusions and stuff like that. So anyway, I created that persona and that's what got me in that look and everything and the fact that they knew. I could, you know, I had, I had studied, you know, and had a, a bit of an acting and theater background that, that got me into movies in the first place. So, but anyway, the item went to Sundance and it was the first ever digital, digitally made film to be admitted into Sundance. So it made a little history that way. Okay. And so, um, really did you get it? <laughs> <laughs> have any, um, uh, um, how was your relationship with the other actors and actresses in the film? It was great. I mean, I, I just, I, I went and I wanted to be prepared. So I, I just studied the hell out of that script. And when I went in, they were all stunned at how prepared I was and how ready for it. And that I had an idea of how I wanted to play it and what I wanted to do with it. And that I knew everything. And even when they were kind of lost for a line, I knew the script so well, I knew their parts as well as mine. Yeah. So awesome. My, that was my whole plan was just be prepared, you know, and go in there and Did you have I was excited to be in it. And I, I, I'm like, this work, I'm going to do more. So I just wanted to be good. Plus to answer a personal friend and I wanted to do good by a friend. And so I knew some of the other actors already and some of them I didn't. And we all got on great. I mean, the, the relationships were all very good and everybody was, you know, having fun and professional, but it's a big indie film and, and everybody was kind of loose and having fun with it too. So, so nobody was super wound up, nobody was super, super, you know, you know, nobody was, you know, cranky into your face or anything like that. I, I, I rarely have ever had any bad experiences on, on really, you know, any of them. I mean, a couple of times, yeah, yeah, you're going to meet, the more you do anything, you're going to meet some challenges. What's happening to your audio? Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, you're st Is it funky? Uh, uh, just a little bit. I don't know. Uh, I, moved, I haven't changed anything. I don't know what's going on. Um, it's going from uh, sounding like it's talking uh, like it's in a walkie-talkie and uh, and to, uh, to regular. So uh, why don't you try uh, signing in and signing out uh, uh, if you can? Uh, okay. I'll have to figure that out. <laughs> Be able to sign out and then sign back it in. It almost sounds like feedback through uh, Radix. Does it? Yeah. We're... And then signing out Radix. I don't know how to. Uh, how do I get. Oh, we'll, we'll just uh, continue then. Um, I mean, if the audio's that bad, um, you know, I'll go in. I'm, I'm. You sound perfectly fine now. Okay. Well, let's see how it goes then. Alrighty. So, um, you were s uh, saying about um, the actors and whatnot. So, uh, so uh... Oh, yeah, no, I'm just saying that you know, you, you know, every now and then you run into difficulties, but largely through all the projects I've worked on, everybody's been pretty cool. You know. Uh, did you have a favorite scene that uh, you acted in the item that you might want to share with us? Mm -hmm. Dr. Odie is largely in a, in a large scene up in the front of the movie, so uh, since it is basically one long scene, I would have to say that. But my favorite part of that is he, he, he brings out this 
box, this container, this thing, it's a life shell with the item, which is a creature that's inside of it. And he opens that up and explains it. And it's a really great kind of techno babble sci-fi moment. And I enjoyed that immensely. Awesome. So um, uh, let's go on to your next film that you uh, you did, and that would be Blood Gnome. How, uh, how was uh, working as the dungeon master? Oh, I uh, love that. Yeah. It's natural because I feel like the dungeon master at home. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that was a, a movie by my friend John Lachago, and John makes cool, weird, twisty stuff with lots of really great. Uh, wonderfully strong female characters in it and stuff, and that was and that was uh, his probably his first big film to get get made and done and and distributed, and it was great fun to make you know, you know? And, and again that's that was something else that was was early on in the career it was it was something that was I was kind of almost a, a billed as a special guest Julie Strains in it uh, Porcelain Twins are in it. And um, Al Burke is in it, and uh, stars uh, Vincent Balancio, who is, you know, Vinny and I have done a lot of other projects. We did Magus together, and, and we've done, uh, we were we were both uh, took part in John's movie, uh, Bio Slime, and, and, uh, and of course, we're both in Dark Realm uh, that we made together jointly. And uh, so Blood Dome was great fun. I mean, it's, it's kind of an old school, almost like one of those, you know, ghoulies, go goonies kind of thing. Oh or something, like that, you know, you know, uh, you know, it's got these little creatures, the blood gnomes and everything. So it was really fun. It was, it was kind of a throwback to that kind of a movie in, in the way some of it looks in the, in the actual characters, which they actually, it, they weren't done digitally. They were actual physical puppeted characters. And it was great fun because in one scene, I actually got to even, you know, puppet some of the blood. Gnomes. That was fun for me. Uh, but the scene that I'm in, it is really fun because it's this dungeon play party blood sport kind of theme that of course you know ends up in a mass kind of slaughtery fun because of the blood gnome and okay. i just liked it it was it was uh well you know i mean my brand is dark sticky fun and that was certainly dark sticky fun because it's this mm -hmm. big, big kicky party that goes awry so it was great <laughs> it was great fun uh how was your uh, relationship with the uh, the actors and actresses in blood gnome no, I love them. I love them all. They're great. They were they were really great. A lot of them are are, are longtime friends. I mean, you know, John and I, you know, we, we haven't made a movie together recently, but we're we're still good friends. Uh, Vinny and I went on to make a bunch of things, and and we were we you know work jointly, and you know, and and, and up to this, you know, one of my very great projects, uh, Dark Realm. You know, we became you know lifelong friends. He's like, he really he's like a he's like a brother to me now. Um, uh, you know, we, we 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 bonded over our you know indie or love and you know wanting to be you know grow up and be Bohemian heroes, which we are. And uh, so there's that, and then, and then everybody else. You know, there's so many other people, and you know, um, my girlfriend at the time was even in the scene because she was actually the you know the costume designer behind the scenes and stuff, and she actually went up in that type party scene, and uh, just everybody was cool. Julie Strain could not have been nicer. You know, the Porcelain Twins were, were really lovely and actually they all of them in, in the co-star Melissa Persley. She has she has really nice things to say to me, even in the behind the scenes on the on the DVD. So and, you know, they were all awesome. They, they, I, I, you know, even Al Burke's still a good friend. And Al's in uh, the wedding singer with Adam Sandler. He's made a lot of different things. Okay. So um did you happen to have a favorite scene from uh, Bl uh, Blood Gnome at all? Well, I'm basically, like I said, in that big play party scene. So it would be that. I mean, you know, for what I'm in, I, I and plus that's kind of a kind of a crescendo to the action in the film. I really like that. But there's some other scenes. There's a, there's another great scene that I'm not in that that is Vinny, you know, fighting with the Blood Gnomes, and uh, and that's really fun. And and it's just it's. It is a horror film that's set in the BDSM underground. So I love the whole movie because it's just, you know, I mean, so many films have absolutely no reason for gratuitous nudity and blood. This one actually sets it in a world where 
<laughs> it's perfectly natural to have lots of nudity and people tied up and blood and, you know, you know, then the element of the blood gnomes and the gore uh, inserted into that world. And I just, I love it for that, you know? All my naughty friends, I'm like, you've got to see this movie. You have to see Blood Gnome. Why did you never tell me to watch it? Why did I not? Well, I'm telling you now, watch Blood Gnome. <laughs> okay. I've only known you for like 20 You'll minutes. Look. I've known Ron for years. Well, I haven't. <laughs> But I do love the name, like Blood Gnome. I can't get past that. It's like Blood Gnome. Oh, yeah. Right? Well, I don't think everybody knew that. Clearly, they didn't. Do what now? Yeah, so now I see that. Alrighty. Well, um, on to your next film. Uh, let's see. Eye of Cruelty. You were a party illusionist. Yeah, well, that's kind of self-explanatory. I mean, they wanted somebody to, you know, I, I actually got into some friends, and they, they introduced me to the filmmaker, and he was making, you know, he was doing something that was actually a Halloween party in the movie, and it was a really interesting, it's a short film, it's really interesting, there's no actual dialogue. It's all, it, it kind of looks like German expressionist, but, you know, in a more modern setting, and, it, and it's all done to this really highly stylized soundscape. So it's really cool. It's like an art film more than anything else, really. Although it is kind of horror, it's really kind of an art film, in, in, in my view. Kind of a horror art film, maybe? Um, okay. It's really interesting. But anyway, yeah, I mean, it's a natural. I mean, you know, it's me, and that's what I, part of what I do in real life is the, uh, you know, gothic illusion and stuff. So they needed somebody to be entertaining at this Halloween party, and that was me. So pretty simple, pretty straight on. But it was a very interesting movie, highly stylized, like I say, nonetheless. So, so that's kind of eye of cruelty right there. Nailed it. Alrighty. So, um, how did you uh, get along with your um, the, the rest of the cast from that film as well? Okay. You know, everybody was really cool, and it was really simple. I mean, they needed you. I mean, it was all, you know, all the, of my scene shot, you know, in one day, in one, in one, uh, one scene setting, and everybody was cool. You know, and there was a lot of other people, and there was people in that scene that were just other friends of the filmmakers and stuff, and it was just super low-budget indie thing, so there was a lot of people that were just there. You know, for you know, for atmosphere and to help build that party scene and stuff like that. And they were just doing it. A lot of them just for fun. So it was kind of cool. And everybody was, you know, super laid back. And you know, we had a good time. Got got the job. You know, there's not a lot of intense work because there was not. You know, it's you know, it was, it was, there, was uh, there was more. You know, direction with the director and. Uh, and beyond that, you weren't interacting too, too much with the other actors because there's no dialogue, you know? So they're basically watching the movie and that's the end of doing my thing. And, and then at some point, we all wind up, you know, having to rush out of the place because something, something bad goes down. And that was kind of the scene. So, so it's all good. Awesome. Um, uh, did you have a uh, favorite scene from uh, the that film as, uh, as well uh did uh mm. you know i don't i don't know it it maybe that i there was just some interesting highly stylized other pieces too which i thought you know more than more than the party scene i thought some of the other stuff kind of kind of really you know uh accentuated and, and used that that soundscape you know uh, uh way of communication you know, very effectively, and I thought it was really a unique way to do that. And um, so some very, that kind of, you know, uh, German expression is kind of the way they shot and, and lit it, I thought was interesting. And, and I, I can't give you a specific example because it's it's hard to break down the whole, you know, uh, thing in my mind right now. Plus, it's been a long time since I've seen that one, that particular film. So... So I would say, Alrighty. 
know, it was a lot of a lot of atmospheric stuff. So it, it all kind of it all kind of blends. It's got kind of a surreal feel to some of it too, because of that and the, because of the way that the sounds done through a soundscape. So mm-hmm. you know, interesting ride. I just like some of the stuff, some of the other parts of the film that that um, I thought use that really uh, very effectively. Awesome. So um, uh, the next film that you were in were, uh, was called The Thirsting from 2007. You were a nightmare doctor. How was that? That was great fun. Mickey Rooney is actually in that movie. Hmm. Really? And that was fun. And I didn't have any scenes with him. Usually one of our actresses that shares a scene with Mickey. And, but it was so exciting. It was I was very geeked out to actually be in a movie with with Hollywood legend Mickey Rooney. It's just weird, you know? And it's weird that he's in a horror film. And I like the movie a lot because it, it gets into, um, it's, it's actually known, I don't think it was actually released here in, in the North America, but it was released in other territories, I think in South America, actually, where it's known by the name of Lilith. And in okay. Just the main, you know, the main character, it gets into Lilith, and it's all about witchcraft in a, in a, in a, in a Catholic girls, you know, retreat camp thing. And of course, you know, the naughtiness ensues and then, and then it's got some really, you know, cool scenes in it. Um, and then the nightmare doctor was fun to play because he's, he's in this, you know, nightmare fantasy scene of one of the girls. And, and it's all their like worst nightmares coming to pass for them and things like that. And I play this, you know, I do it I'm doing like kind of a, German bow uh, Euro accent in this, and, he, and it's creepy. And they come down these stairs into this basement, and I'm doing. It's supposed to be doing, you know, plastic surgery on her, you know, and it winds up going horribly awry. And uh, and that's the point is it's getting herself, you know. And, and he's nasty. And he's, fun, and he's smoking and playing. <laughs> it's just a. It was just a really fun thing to do because it's just so. Uh, Okay, so um, how was your um, relationship with uh, the other actors and actresses in uh, uh, the uh, the Thirsting? Oh, it was really good. I mean, you know, again, in that in that capacity, my scene was only with one other actress. You know, focused on the subject of this, and you know, getting into her fears. It's almost a, you know, Freddy Krueger getting in your head, basically. In terms of those, those dark fantasies that go bad for them. And um, so the actress I was really, you know, I got to meet and work with a lot of them, you know, meet the other actors and stuff. I wasn't working directly with them. So again, you know, it was an indie film, and you just kind of feel like a family. Everybody's there trying to get it done and give their best performances. And it was, it was good. It was, it was a good experience. It was fun. It was funny. We actually we had shot that scene once, and they did it in a way that was. It was this doctor's office, but set in the woods because they were trying to do this fantasy scene, surreal thing with it, and it didn't really work out. So we shot the entire scene then inside, and it was actually shot in a stairwell in in a building. And you know they used this one landing in the stairwell as the office part, but it looked great because it was dark and it was you know you know, uh, shadowy and, and, um, you know, uh, you know, it was, it was a stone building and then this metal staircase that came down and it was really a much better atmosphere to shoot that scene in the, the production value I thought was went way up when, it, when they set it in there rather than the other scene, which I'm sure once they looked at this, this doctor's office in the, that essentially in the woods in the forest just did not play the way they wanted it. We shot the entire thing. Awesome. Uh, so, did you have a favorite scene from uh, uh, from the uh, the thirsting? Then there's a lot. And it's not just my scene, but I, I, a lot of those, you know, all of those nightmare scenes where the girls' worst fears kind of play out in this. And there's also a really fun scene that's in the beginning that sets this scene up later in the film. But in the beginning of the film. There is a really interesting scene um, that's just, it's just fun because it's so like kind of classic 80s horror again for me. And, and all the girls get naked and sit around in a, in a circle and light candles and are doing witchcraft. 
in this Catholic schoolgirl camp. And that to me was just great fun. Awesome. Um, yeah. Okay. And it was just. So, um, you know. The next fil uh, film that you were in was The Magus, which is actually one of my favorites. Uh, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your role in The Magus? No, this is not based on the book at all. You're thinking about The Magus, which is a much older movie from the 60s. Um, and, and people, that, that was something that people got. Actually, you know, we got, Joan got some nasty comments back on that because there were people just expecting it to be, you know, the same thing the, from The Magus, um, that classic older film. And it's got nothing to do with that. It's just called The Magus, which is another word for, you know, the Magi or Magician. And they're magic users. They're energy manipulators, actually, what they are. And it's all about the secret world of these people that can do this magic, quote unquote, and, and it's energy manipulation. And it's how they're a hidden world. Well, my character has been, you know, they, they had to subdue him, and he's been drugged up and kept in a mental institution. He breaks out. And this whole thing is an exclusive world magic and other and uh, he comes out and, you know, all hell breaks loose. And I, I love it. It was uh, John wrote the part for me. They never even auditioned anyone else for that role. And, and he wrote it for me. You know, again, it was an influence from watching me on my stage work. Because he had seen a lot of my stage shows. He, he really likes my work. And we were friends after starting to work together. And um, he had actually, you know, um, come out and and shot my work video for me for me to study and and, uh, and share like that and uh he loved the way i moved on stage and he knew that with the effects because he did there's over 300 visual effects and we're like throwing energy and lightning at each other and things like that and he, he knew that from the way i moved on stage that i could envision and see what he was doing with the special effects and then i could he liked the way i moved on stage so he knew he liked that the character where I could move and throw energy and you know that I could visualize and see the effect happening because he had it all sort of weird out nice and I could see what he wanted and then I could move you know and give that to him. and I, I loved it because it was a really good role it was a really good character it was really fun to get into you know it was a lot of people with from blood no myth came back and some new people whose train was back uh, Younger sister, Poopy Strain, one of the stars of the film, you know, uh, along with myself and, and Bill Steele, who is the, the opposing, you know, uh, magic user, the other, the other uh, magician who has to come out and, and uh, challenge the Magus. And uh, it's a really good story. It's a solid story. It, it has some art in it. And it's also, you know, it, it's got some depth. And the visual is great. And, you know, you know it, Movies I tell anybody that they're interested in seeing me in something because it's a nice, chunky starring role as well. Even the box for that is a picture of the Magus on the front. So it's uh, it, it's a favorite of mine because the story's good, the acting's pretty solid, it's produced really well. Some of it was even shot on the back lot. And you, it was just it was really well done. And I wish people would see it. I wish they had it out on more streaming services or finally get a television. I watch it. You know, it really should because they would love something like that and it would be a perfect fit with them. So I hope at some point they make that sale um, and, and they get it out there. So because more people should see it. It is, it is part of, again, we know what streaming is on Amazon Video. It's not part of Prime. Okay. You can you can get it. From, you know, don't know that it's streaming right now there, but uh, yeah. But it was good. The whole experience was good. And again, you know, everyone. Was great you know, I, I really went to John Lachago, you know, and I liked the whole thing. And I was just honored that he would stop and create and write an entire character in a movie around it, you know, just for me. I was I was, I was really thrilled that he wanted to do that. But he liked that idea so much. That it, you know, that's what we knew it, and um, it was really great. And again, you know, um, you know, Vincent Bellaccio's in that, and Al Burke is in that, 
and you know a lot of our a lot of our friends that we've worked with you know before and since uh, are all in there it's just it's, it's a good it's a solid movie and a, a great experience making it and i remember studying my lines and and listening to marilyn manson's uh anti superstar the whole time i was listening, reading my lines and everything to give you to have that vibe me as i put it together because he's kind of you know held down and, and out and, and you know vengeance and everything for a large part of this and 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 it was fun to kind of have that running through my head as I study the lines. Awesome. Uh, did you have a favorite uh, scene from the Megas that you wanted to share with us? Hmm. <laughs> There's a couple. There's a really great, really great scene that involves magic that is what most people talk about. That's, that's kind of a takeaway for a lot of people, and I really like that. I love shooting it. Uh, Ava Derrick's in that scene, and she's glorious in that scene. And, uh, and it was great fun, and I love talking about it. And people come up to me all the time and go, can you really do that? And the answer is yes, of course. So, uh, <laughs> and the other the big climactic you know, kind of fight scene at the end where the, the two, myself and Bill Steele's character, go at each other. And that's full of amazing effects and uh, and it's really fun. And there's so much of it that's good. But those those two are the big takeaways for me. You know? Um, those are those are great things. You know? Great scenes. Most, most definitely. Um, I know I enjoyed the film when, uh, when I saw, uh, saw it. So, um, <laughs> moving on... You like scenes did you like it well um i remember uh the the i liked the end uh, end scene where, where um um the um where your character was going up against the female character and uh the fight uh, the uh energy scene between the two that was uh mm -hmm. That was definitely a unique scene there, and I like, and I liked the, uh, the CGI in the in this film too be, uh, because they didn't overdo it. No, John's really good about. I, I think CGI is best when it's used to augment, used as, as, in an augment way, and you almost have to do that with you know. I mean, they used to rotoscope things like that, and now it's all done digitally. But you know, to get those kind of effects where you're shooting lightning at each other and stuff, you know, it has to be a digital effect. But because he is an artist, he's a he's a classic. He's a trained painter. He can paint. He can draw. He's amazing. And and he did most of those 300 visual effects his own self. Um, because and because he's an artist, he could finesse that and give it a look where that's. I thought. I thought the fact that he was an actual visual artist made those effects look even better because he knew how to finesse that look to give it, you know, a, a great look and finish and, and, and movement to them, you know? Most definitely. Um, so, uh, so the next film that, uh, that you did was actually from Wisconsin, uh, Wisconsin director, um, and uh, that was Incest Death Squad, um, although that was a small part. How was that, that working with you? Yeah. Yeah, he's awesome. He, you know what? We 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 all got together and we met, and they shot that scene. Lloyd Kaufman's in that scene, which was great fun to be in a scene with Lloyd. And uh, you know, from Trauma Films, for those who don't know, go look him up. He's hysterical fun. Um, and uh, and I just they 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 tapped a few people to come in, and it really it's just a little microscopic cameo in this office scene. All these people are in there. I mean, they even name the character. They call the character in the movie. They just call him Ron. So, I mean, it's like, what am I doing? I'm just sitting there looking at stuff, and we're watching. Basically, it's Lloyd that carries that scene, and we're just, you know, kind of interacting with him. A little bit. And that's all that is. It's just this microscopic little cameo, you know, up in the front of the film. And, and it was great fun, but there's not a lot to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> No, but it's definitely a, a, a neat little indie film. Uh, in any case, um, uh, how was uh, working with, uh, or as the creature's voice in the BIOS line? I love doing that because I like voice work. I get a lot of comments on my voice. And when I when I did my own cable TV show for like seven years in the early 90s called Fitzgerald's Realm, which ran through Chicago and, you know, the burbs and stuff uh, in this market. And... Um, 
and I did, there was a lot of different, every time there was character voices or puppet voices or anything like that, it was, it was almost always me. And so I liked doing the voice work and everything. And, and in BioSlime, it's, it's, it's pretty highly processed, but you, it's still, it was that, it was that kind of sinister performance that John wanted. And, and I loved doing that for him and to see my voice coming out of Victoria DeMar at one point in the film is just kind of a kinky thrill. So I, I loved it. It's another, I, I think it's a running theme with, with John, but this is another one that's, that's there's, some, there's some pretty naughty stuff in the film as well. It's, it's provocative in that way. There's, you know, sexual, you know, uh, content uh, in the film, along with this great dark sci-fi uh, film. So it, it's, it's a great combination of those things. And, and I just love being in any way and anything that, that John wanted to do. And so when I could, you know, um, it, it didn't work out where I could actually physically be there and be in the, for the shooting. But he asked me, he wanted me in there so bad that he, he wanted to use my voice for the creature. And so I was, I was thrilled to do that for him. And it, and it was great fun to just, and really interesting to just be able to go in and do a, a vocal performance. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, did you have a favorite scene from uh, BioSlime that you wanted to share with us? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot, of, a lot of different stuff, but that, you know, you know, that, 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 I don't want to give too much of it away, you know, spoilers, yeah. so many spoilers, you know? Um, yeah. I want to see it and be surprised, because it's a really cool film, and it's a, it's a good concept, um, you know, and and again, it stars Vincent Bellanchio and 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 Vinny holds it down. Al Burke's in there again, and and, uh, and, and Victoria Demar is, is uh, one of the stars of that. And they're you know, they're all my friends, and they're all really awesome in it. So I like so much of the of the whole thing. But I don't know. For me, I like the naughty bits. <laughs> for me, I also I love that bit where you know Victoria is kind of merged with the creature and. And that voice, which is my voice, my performance coming out of her mouth, it's just, it's really cool and weird. But there's a lot of other things, too, where you see the creature doing its thing and stuff. And again, it's one of John's trademarks is he does, he does a lot, you know, some really great effects in the film. And because mm -hmm. he's a visual artist, it look amazing all the time. Kyle Slime, it, it's, you know, it's a little like Magus in that way. The effects look really, really cool because he is a visual artist and can do some work himself. And, um, yeah, so, so I don't know. I, I would cite that scene, but there's, there's other things, too, that I don't want to give away too much because it, I'm afraid it'll spoil it too much for people. So oh, I, I, it's, like, it's, like, it's like Blood Gnome. Go watch it. You, you'll be entertained. Okay. Uh, so the next uh, little thing that you were in was a little short film called uh, Conscience. Uh, as Dr. Abel Cottrell? Yeah, it's basically, a, a, I'm, I'm playing uh, pretty much a, a, a Hannibal Lecter kind of character. He's very, you know, I mean, it's got my whole, it was kind of based around it. At first, the director wanted to do something that was going to be a Roy Orbison killer. And uh, since I was, I helped her produce it and everything, I was telling her that, well, that would be difficult because you don't have the money you know, hardly to make a film, you certainly <clears throat> don't have the money to license any Roy Orbison music. And, and if you're going to do a Roy Orbison killer, you most certainly have to have, you know, at least his, some of his music or sound alike music in there. So, you know, and I just thought, thought about that and using that look was going to be very difficult to pull off with a, a no to low budget kind of indie short film. So we decided to go another way and we talked about it and, and we, we landed it because I, I have a good you know, uh, I, I give good Hannibal. So, I mean, I'll give you an example. And, and, and this, and I was just doing this impersonation through the okay. film, which is basically an impersonation of, of uh, you know, Anthony Hopkins. Um, of a lamb screaming Clarice. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and I love doing that. I love busting it out and doing that. Uh, you know, whenever I can, I, I will. I will stop and do that on stage, and it just I get a great reaction out of a live audience with that too. And so, basically, it was a good way to put that, you know, Hannibal Lecter impersonation to use, and then it became much more like that, and then it was much more doable. Um, awesome. That's and so that's so, yeah, and, and uh, go ahead. You know, yeah, it's uh, yeah. So it, and it was great fun to do that actually.
it was great fun to kind of bring Hannibal to life. And you know, it's 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 really you know it's it's classic and not strictly considered a horror film, but certainly loved by everybody in the horror genre. Most definitely. Um, so, uh, did you have a favorite scene that you wanted to share from uh, that little short film, or no? Hmm. I'm trying to remember what that would be. Um, not, not sure. There's a, there's a, there's actually a, a point where um, my character is kind of uh, writing this letter, and it shows me writing the letter, and and. and and actually, as it's showing that I uh, as as I'm writing the letter, I am near. It's my narration in the Hannibal, you know, impersonation can Hannibal parody over that. And, and it was really fun. We got to I got to accentuate some you know naughty, fun, provocative stuff in that letter. So I think that reading of that, you know, for me for doing that, that was that was great fun. Um, and yeah, cause I don't know. I mean, you'd have to ask somebody else. I don't know how sort of anything. You know, I don't know that it played a lot of other festivals or anything like that. So I'm not sure how much play or review or anything it really got. You know, it's uh, you know, it, it was fun to come in and 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 do some you know uh, producing work and stuff. It was it was difficult working with the director because uh, you know, it was it uh, she was difficult. <laughs> you know, well, I was, I was trying to help someone make a film, and they, you know, weren't making it easy. Ah. Uh, moving on, uh, Afraid of Sunrise was your next film. Uh, uh, how was it uh, playing a club kid vampire? It's more like a club kid killer vampire. It's kind of like you know, and again, it's 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 one. It's basically one really good scene in there. And I, and I play that scene with uh, Kelsey Zukowski, uh, who's now out in L.A., and she's done a lot of indie film and is an alt model and everything. And she's lovely and great to work with. I worked with her again later in Year of the Ox. And, uh, and in, um, in that, well, I love anything vampire. You know, I give a good vampire. I love to do vampire stuff. Um, it's always a favorite, and that's that was a whole vampire film. So I was really thrilled to be in that, and it was great fun to make it. And basically, I'm you know I'm luring this lovely young woman. You know, uh, you know we're, we're having drinks, and you know I'm kind of you know she's kind of spellbound bound by this character. And the next thing you know, we're we're taking a walk, and we're out in an alley, and I'm drinking her. And then mm -hmm. and then and then the vampire hunter comes in and finds me and the fight ensues and it's just great it's great fun it's super you know it's just you know it's very kind of modern vampire-y kind of scene and i i love doing it you know it was it was awesome. great fun you know you know the the, the you know the club there i am wearing all you know like black pvc jacket and stuff like that and it's just you know things are flying and bloods everywhere and uh you know uh, you know kelsey's lovely and she's laying there with you know blood all over and you know and then you know the whole vampire hunter fight scene and stuff it was you know uh, i guess maybe it could be considered a little typical of something like that but still it was great fun and, and well done it was it was a well-made uh movie i thought it was uh, in an interesting really interesting concept you know, in terms of, you know, how he's trying to now, you know, it, it's a little like True Blood in the fact that they're kind of out of the coffin and, and people know that there's vampires and now the government is like rounding them up and putting them in camps and, but also trying to use them for their own nefarious purposes and things. So it was really interesting concept again, you know, because again, if you want to get, if you want to find some interesting concepts, you have to go to indie film. It's just too bad that, that the bigger studios don't tap more of those directors or writers because really interesting stuff uh, money production value those are not enough production value because there's not enough budget you know yeah most definitely and, and uh, unfortunately with low budgets and what uh, whatnot there's not a, a lot you can do when you've got to make budgets so in any case uh so uh, did you have a favorite scene from afraid of sunrise <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs>
did you have a favorite scene of uh, Afraid of Frank? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, there's a lot of hunting scenes, up and he's hunting things, and uh, and um, he even has a relationship with one of the vampires. So I liked that a lot, and I, I you know, I of course like that scene, you know, scene where he's, you know, you know, on my and he's drinking the hell out of this girl, uh, you know, in this alley, and and he. The vampire hunter right into the scene, and you know, and he just turns around like turns and fangs and me kind of thing. And that there's a lot of fun moments, really good, uh, <laughs> yeah, some other good vampire, you know, actions and kill scenes and stuff like that. But I like the things that are visceral, like that, all that, you know, anything. It almost looks like it could have come out of, uh, out of like, you know, Underworld or something like that. You know, because the, the lighting was right, and it's all outside. And things. When we were shooting that, the cops showed up and everything, and they were they they, they wondered what the hell was going on. And then they then they were totally cool with us that we, they knew we were shooting this uh, indie horror film, and they left us alone. Everything was great. It was freezing as hell that night when we shot it. Too. <laughs> Alrighty. Um. Uh, so the next film that you, you know? were in was Horween, uh, and you were a haunted ho house curator. Yeah, well, you know what? The funny thing about that is, is they they uh, cast me on that, and they had all this giant list of celebrity cameos that are supposed to be this thing and everything. They have still, to this date, not finished that film. So, I've never even shot my scene for that. How it's still on IMDb? Why it's still on IMDb? Um, if they ever intend to actually finish it. <laughs> I have no idea. So that's the story between Halloween. Great title. I wish they'd make the damn thing or finish the damn thing. Uh, I haven't heard from them in a long time, so I don't know whatever is going to happen with that. Gotcha. But that's the story behind it. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, and uh, you, you mentioned the year of the ox bef uh, before uh, with the uh, director of uh, Afraid of Sunrise. Uh, what, uh, you were no, 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 a same fan in it? Kelsey Zukowski and I are both in, and we're in both of those things. Different director. <coughs> okay. Uh, Rob Sepulveda is the director of Year of the Ox, which is a highly stylized, almost slightly Blade Runner-ish kind of, is set in the near future kind of horror sci-fi kind of film. And it is about these... Um, it's all set in Chinatown. We shot it in Chinatown here in Chicago, and that was great fun, and everybody was very cool to work with there. And um, it, it's about this girl who, you know, it's like the Chinese mob, and this girl who gets kidnapped, and, and, and you know, these creatures, vampires, uh, are, are and people and doing things and my character is in there and he has a very a very uh specific ability which is why he is working he has a background in a relationship because obviously he's a caucasian man and he's working with the chinese mob and um and he's kind of you know almost one of their you know specialists or an enforcer but in a very special way and the fact that i can get information out of people he has the ability to touch sense people i mean just by, by shaking hands with them just by touching them he gets flashes of what's in their head. He gets flashes of who they are, what they've done. He can, he can access information about that person simply by touching them. So it's got this kind of, kind of uh, you know, sci-fi, supernatural, paranormal element to it set in this kind of futuristic uh, vampire film. And, and it's only 10 minutes long. It's on YouTube. You can all go look at it tonight and go check it out. And it's really cool. It's got Chinese subtitles on it. It's so stylized and so very cool. And the way it's shot and lit in a lot of it, um, Rob did an amazing job with it. I, I'm making a movie with him right now called um, uh, The Devil Frame, which is in post right now. Uh, and, and he does really cool, interesting work. And, and Year of the Ox was really fun. And a lot of people got to see it. You know, I've, I've had people, you know, come up and want to talk to me about it. And maybe that's because on YouTube and also it, it got it got shared quite a bit, you know, by people, by, by different fans of, of, you know, myself and everybody else who's in it. And it was great to work with Kelsey Zukowski again and, and to work uh, with uh, Rob Sepulveda, who I've worked with on a lot of other things and has helped me with a lot of other projects. 
Alrighty. So, um, next is uh, Dracula's Orgy of the Damned, and you played Dracula. I did, and that's the only reason I took that damn film was because. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that the fact that I got to play Dracula, they offered me Dracula. You you really can't say no to that. And then no, and no. then the, fact, the title alone says it all. The fact that I get to say I'm in Dracula's Orgy of the Damned. Bang! Right there. That's it. Get to laugh every time I say it on stage. Um, it's a super cheap, super cheesy little horror film. I mean, the director came to me and said, oh, we're going to make it look like a Hammer horror film. It doesn't look like a Hammer horror film. Nothing like a Hammer horror film. You know? <laughs> it, you know so, um, I felt like he was a little dishonest in, in that. I think he was just he just it wasn't able to you know, get the production values you know he wanted to i came in and in fact I, I i love saying it and this is true i brought the orgy to the orgy of the damned because he was about to make that movie where there was no naughty scene or anything like that there was no sex scene there was no there was no orgy in the orgy of the damned and i went to him really early on and said we've got a sexist thing up i'm like you can't possibly make an indie horror film made called dracula's orgy of the damned without having anything in it whatsoever and it there wasn't so i wrote a scene okay yes exactly you have some orgy in your damned and i brought him a damned orgy you know <laughs> i mean we shot it in a psm dungeon and i had some lovely friends of mine that that work in in that industry and in burlesque uh come in and do you know some provocative you know scantily clad scenes and there is lots of blood and nudity, and uh, you know there is the orgy and the orgy of the damned, and it uh, well, it, it, it's awesome. it's one of like scenes in the entire film that actually actually work. Um, uh, you know, there's some other there's some other stuff in there as well, but you know, it, uh, it, it you know it was an experience, and it was fun, you know. And then they didn't give me any writing credit on that particular scene. They uh, they they credited me in the end with uh, a scene concept that I came up with a concept, but they had, uh, they had stripped the dialogue out of it, I think, just so they didn't have to give me a writing credit. And then and they put a soundscape, over it, which is actually effective in the scene. So I have no real problem with it if that's their prerogative anyway. So I, I really can't say anything about that. But you know it. Uh, it was fun, and I'm glad we made that scene because it, it makes the movie. Uh, I, I think it, it it keeps it. it you, I mean, I I can't imagine what people would say when you watch it, and there wasn't anything like that in that movie. You would go away going, "Well, there wasn't any orgy in that orgy of them that really was," you know. And I mean, now at least. Most yeah, and even if they go away, I, I, mean, I can't imagine anybody's going to watch it and say a lot of great things about it. The reviews completely tore it. <laughs> I knew, but, yeah, it was not. It was not pretty. It was not not pretty. It had some cool things, and that scene was one of them. And then we had an actual um, English uh, narrator, you know, who shot his scenes in England and and then sent them uh, back to us here in the states. And and the, the, the audience and the reviewers seem to react well to him, you know. And that almost comes off almost a little bit like you know, the narrator in the Rocky Horror Picture Show, you know, something like that. Most definitely. You know, the problem was I went to the director and I said, you want me to play this straight, you know, like, like you know, directly the straight man in this, or do you want me to play this for, you know, comedy? Do you want me to play it in a, in a campier way? And he said, he, you know, and play it straight. Well, and that was a mistake because had, I think it would have been way more fun had Dracula been way more fun rather than just going out and play everything. You know, because nobody else was really playing it for comedy either. It's just it's just a lot of a lot of not good indie acting, and and so it, it has its issues. I mean, but if you want to see a, a great Gee, the damn scene, there you go. It's in that movie. And if you ask me what my favorite scene is, yes, it's that one. Okay. All righty. Uh, so the next uh, film is the one that uh, uh, that just recently came out on uh, Amazon in distribution, correct? Uh, it's called Dark Realm. And yeah. And play Master of the Realm there. 
Yes. Basically, it's it's kind of it, it, obviously close to home. I'm playing myself. I mean, it is a really unique combination. I co-wrote it and co-produced it with Vincent Belanchio, who who also directs it, and uh, and and also stars Kaylee Williams. And it's really interesting in the fact that it is there's no other film out there like it. It is uh, a large degree, like 60, 65 percent of the film is me. Uh, doing my illusion show on stage. We shot it on a big stage. It's nicely produced, nicely lit, beautifully, looks great. Multi-camera shoot in front of a live audience that was not that was not paid extras. It's an actual live audience. You get actual reactions to the illusions. And my illusion show is all, it's dark, it's horror, you know, uh, supernatural, occult themed. And, and it, you know, from the, you know, uh, and it influences from the, uh, of course, the Gothic industrial underground and things like that that subculture so it's all it's all dark culture based and so it's perfect match in a horror film and what we did was we took those sequences of live illusion performances because it's about this guy's show and then it is surrounded and even penetrated uh by a uh with a horror narrative so it's got this horror it's a horror movie and a live performance film a little bit of an art film all blended together in a really unique way. <laughs> like what? Alrighty. So, um, uh, uh, did um, did you have any uh, pro uh, problems with uh, working with any of the cast? Uh, no, not really. It was a bit of a challenge for some of them because I, I, I you know, people have been here for a long time, so, you know, some of the people that are working in my actual day job, you know, in a policy like that, um, not everyone, you know, not needs to affect me in their mind. So, I was really surprised by it when the performance is really different. Uh, performances are very good, even but I also have, you know, Kaylee Williams and Heather Dorr uh, in the movie, and I brought them in specifically so they could, you know, deliver dialogue. You know, and we rehearsed for the film, and they were. Something that they would never do, and then this that allowed them to do that along acting and and great, you know, great so to do that, and I kind of on the line, but you know, other he, he you know because he's the director then he ran all the tech end and the crew and brought all them in and, and he also cast a few of the actors too um we shot it all in, in chicago in the chicago area and, and then over the, uh, the states all shot in the state theater in south bend indiana which is a beautiful place to shoot that. you know big giant venue yeah, because we need him. it was going to be really hard to, to do that and do it convincing and have the production value on the screen if we didn't have the proper venue to shoot the actual show in since it's so much of the film. You know, and then we brought in a gaffer to be lighting and everything like that and, and sound and uh, uh, it, uh, it it turned out really, really great. And that it, it is all you can get the D V D, you know, from me at shows and, and, and uh, through the my through the website, you know, darkrealmovie.com com you can get the dvd through us right now um it'll be out uh, largely on dvd later uh a much larger release uh, through larger retailers which is in the works right now and uh, but right now you can see it on stacks tv xyz uh stacks is a distributor and so they have their own streaming platform and their own television venue uh along with other indie movies on it and then you can also see it you know as we were talking about earlier um on it's part of amazon prime right now so if you're on amazon video and you have Amazon Prime, you can watch it for free. So put Dark Realm in your watch list tonight, and you can see uh, it's a great ride. It's great fun. The music's amazing. We're going to be doing a soundtrack to Dark Realm, too, which is really fun because indie horror films don't 
we rarely do a soundtrack along with them and we're going to do a soundtrack because the movie is so good it gets mentioned in the reviews so we're we're you know we're going to be offering that very very soon and awesome. um and the movie's on there yeah thanks and and it's on it's on um it's doing great for us on Amazon, and, and it's on. And you know, once you're on Amazon, you're out with with a one of the big platforms in a, in a major retailer, and people start to really pay attention. You know, we we're 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 looking at Netflix and, and other you know platforms as well. You know, to happen very very soon. But you know, I've been very thankful and grateful that our distributor and and, and Amazon came in and and put us up. And that's been a big boon, especially being part of Prime, where people, if you have the, you know, the Prime package, you can just go in and, and watch, you know, Dark Realm and other great indie horror films and, and other big films, you know, for free as part of that package. So it's really cool to get bundled into that and, and now have, finally have a, a much larger audience for the film. And it's really exciting because it's such a different project and I'm getting a lot of attention, you know, just for that because it's like you know because i have a very different you know stage illusion show and that's working for me but then everybody then sat down and it's like oh well he made his own movie too and then that and that seemed to be be something that's that's catching on with a lot of the audience and and, and industry people alike you know it got their attention so i'm, I'm kind of thrilled that it's it's really starting to move it's it's got a i mean we made it several years ago but it, it, and we it, we it took a long time in post because we had to fix some some sound issues and other things along the way and uh it, it was a long arduous journey and i'm but we we got it done and we got it the distributor and now it's out and people are seeing it finally and and i'm just i'm just i'm thrilled it's it's had a long kind of you know, indie cult film kind of burned to it, and people are still coming to it, and discovering it just now, and and that's cool. So, um, I don't know. I, I I couldn't I couldn't be happier with it. I, I guess so. I mean, uh, and and uh, and a big thanks to Vincent Belanchio because I could not have made it without Vinny because he it all started when he came to me and said, "Hey, let's shoot, let's shoot your stage show." You know, you know, in other words, he wanted to shoot, he wanted to do a video of the show. And I said, let's not just do a video of the show. Anybody can put out, you know, a, a video of their, you know, their, you know, performance. I'm like, let's make a movie out of it. I, I wanted to do something completely different with it, you know. And so in one way it is, it's, it's like, it, it is, it is genuinely a, a really unique indie horror film. And it's also from another way, other people have said, if you look at it another way, it's really the most stylized illusion special ever made. And somebody said that and somebody called it like entertainment alchemy because of all the different, you know, you know, genres that it, kind of touches on. Um, you know, in terms of horror and, and art. So it, it's a great review. And I'm just, I don't know. You can tell from the way I talk about it, I'm pretty geeked about it. So I'm just glad it worked. You know, it was, we dragged something different and it worked. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Cool. I'm just going to touch on Arkham a little bit and uh, uh, the, the Devil Frame that's uh, 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 that's uh, 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 coming uh, coming out eventually. Uh, Arkham Sa uh, Sanitarium Soul e Eater. You were Louis Theobald. Yes, um, made by Julian Grant, who makes a lot of, of cool indie films and everything. And you know, check out his other work as well. And uh, I'm, you know, it, it's almost a, a great feature, big cameo kind of later in the film. And I get to play Louis Theobald in there. It's all set. It's all based on uh, Lovecraft legend and lore. Lovecraft. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, yes, you did. Yeah, definitely, it's very Lovecraftian. It's all it's all about Lovecraft kind of characters in this assignment. and like, you know the director Steerbold shows up later, and he, he shows up in the kind of crescendo of this whole thing as as like everything about to go dark. With these people that have, been there. and it's also a meaning of. And, uh, and it's, it's also on Amazon. It's part of Prime. So the movie to put in your watch list is Arkham Sanitarium. Okay. 
Uh, Alrighty, now you're not speaking for some reason. <laughs> no, the sound kind of went very low. It sounded like it out entirely. Can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you now. Pardon? I can hear you now. So, uh, but uh, uh, let's uh, let's talk about the Devil's Frame now, and uh, then we'll get into the uh, tonight's discussion. Absolutely. Well, the frame, uh, like I said earlier, uh, it's made by Rob Sepulveda. It's a really cool film. It's kind of a throwback to you know horror, occult thrillers from the seventies and eighties. You know, in in its in its storyline, but of course, it's very it's completely contemporary. And um, Rob did a really cool um, uh, about um, ritual voodoo magic uh, inside the high end art world. And it's really cool, very stylized. It's, uh, it's real. And we a lot of it. It's okay. The volume just went low again. Did it go low? Yeah. Um, oh. Speak again. Yeah, you're going in and out. Still doing that again? Or no? Uh, yeah. Uh, do it again. How are we doing? I can hear you now. Yes. Are you with me? I was. Yep. I I'm with you. you. Is that? Yeah. I can hear you. Yes, but I can't hear you. Where? Do you want me to continue? Hey, Go ahead and continue. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I was going to say it's ritual voodoo it's in high end art world, and it's and it's shot in a really surreal way. And it's going to be fun. It's in it's deep in post right now, and should be done shortly. And um, I I uh, you know will uh, will be uh, hearing it hopefully very soon. Awesome. Alrighty. So tonight's discussion is on uh, the Wizard of Gore, which was done by Herschel Gordon Lewis. And the reason why I wanted to do uh, do. Uh, uh, th uh, this uh, episode is uh, because of Herschel Gordon Lewis's passing, R.I.P., um, and uh, is kind of in tribute to uh, the uh, the world of war and his passing. So, um, in any case, uh, why don't we start with um, Celeste? So, uh, uh, Celeste. Uh, uh, um, how are you doing tonight? And uh, thank you for uh, being patient. And uh, uh, what was your thoughts on the uh, the film? I can't remember when I first saw it. It's one of those movies I saw over the years a few times. But I always liked it because it was so weird. Okay. And uh, what yeah, were your th thoughts on it? <laughs> Sorry, I have trouble hearing. Uh, what were your thoughts on it? Oh, I, I just thought it was a fun movie. I liked the concept because it was really different, and I, the ending was like a what the, so <laughs> makes you want to rewatch it right away. <laughs> All righty. So, um, uh, Dustin, why don't you tell us uh, what uh, what uh, you thought of the film when you first saw it? And, uh, how, uh, how uh, well, and evidently this was your first time, right? Uh, yes. Uh, first things first. What the fuck is that sound in the background? Uh, Agreed. Uh, so anyway, this was the first time I saw the film. Um, I ha don't think I'd ever actually seen a Herschel Gordon Lewis uh, anything. So it was like, oh, this is that guy. Um, <laughs> and after a while, like, it seemed to just be a series of set pieces. So I kind of got tired of it by the time the sword scene came around. But overall, it was fine. Uh, 
how some of the effects were kind of done on the cheap, but I did some reading, and it sounded like he wasn't too happy with them himself. Uh, but uh, I guess my main takeaway is, wow, that was cool, and I guess I don't need to buy that expensive box set after all. <laughs> well, um, how about uh, you, Tito? Um, what did you think of the uh, film uh, that Gordon Lewis uh, did in the 70s? Uh, quite honestly, uh, I used to rent that up there at the uh, video store uh, on VHS when I was a little kid, and I was real happy about it because uh, I like magicians. And then I, I kept rewinding the scenes because uh, all the gore and like how he was playing with it. You gotta gotta remember, I was a little kid, right, when I was watching it. So I was kind of fascinated with it. Now, when you look at it, you can see how bad the special effects were and everything. But well, as a as a young boy, I I, I really got a kick out of it. All righty. Um, Ron, uh, when you first saw it, what was your, uh, what, what was your thoughts about uh, the, uh, uh, seeing the Wizard of Gore and uh, what kind of effect did it have on you as an actor? Well, I mean, it is the uh, dark. So clearly I loved it from the moment I saw it. And I didn't discover it until, oh, well into the uh, when I first saw it. And so it had been around a while. And I just, you know, the idea, because I was, you know, and am uh, an illusionist, I love the idea of a horror film centered around this insane magician who actually slaughters people on stage and makes it look like he's not slaughtering them. I just love the whole thing. And the surreal aspect to it. So that's just right at the end. It's like, what the hell is that? <laughs> 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 yeah, it's like, problematic. But the rest of it, and the idea of the long and um, the stage of the illusions to get really set around that, and even though, you know, like you were saying, the effects are super low rent and very bad, they're still, unless if you watch them, because when he's playing with the eyeball and things like that, still make you, you know, a lot of people screw up it because it is so bloody and gory, it's just the, the, the production value we had and the, the technology used for that report. Uh, you know, we know yeah, it's not, and it's not good by any standard, it, it does not hold up at all very well, except the, the, I mean, it's such a key of being over the top of it anyway, and the effects don't hold up as you watch it now. The text in the movie can't be super great. So I love it, I love it, I love it, I got to meet him, she couldn't lose a few times, and yes, it's, it's sad that we lost him, uh, I think last October, last September, I'll be over in this third year. But I got to meet Herschel several times. He could not have been nicer. In fact, I had talked to him uh, when this was quite a bit of a real. And I talked to him about, you know, who had the rights and about actually remaking the Wizard of War. I loved the film so much. I, I wanted to redo it. I wanted to play Montag myself. But then, right after I talked to him about that, um, the, the, the remake came out. And, and other than all the gratuitous naked suicide girls in it, I wasn't thrilled with the remake at all. But I think I would make it again if somebody just did it. They, they put up, you know, they, they, that wall's already been tapped. But, but it was so. The person had said to me, well, you know, if that's the case, then don't worry about that. Just go make, make your own. You know, finish everything. And that's what I did. And that's, that's one of the reasons I made it. I made it to the commercial about it. But he was, he was a great guy, and, and I miss him. Yeah. And it was always fun because I. Awesome. Uh, Bre uh, Brandon, uh, why don't you tell us uh, what you thought of the uh, Wizard of Gore, and uh, why don't you tell us uh, when you first saw it, or if you first saw, uh, saw it, or this was your first time, was it? Well, I actually had a weird experience with it, because I watched it first, uh, well, I watched Juno, and uh, Juno mentioned Wizard of Gore. It was interesting because I was familiar with that time in films when they were when they did a lot of the bloody gory stuff, and I was like, okay, I'm familiar with his work, but I haven't seen that one. And then I ended up getting the remake instead. Okay. And I actually really liked the remake, but then I watched it again last night. I watched the original with uh, Herschel Gordon. I mean, uh, with my uh, with my actual set that I, that they had, and. 
Actually, I liked both of the films, uh, both that one and the remake. I was actually surprised at how well they did the remake of it. But there's something about that time in film, in my opinion, the the, the blood, the effects that they used in that uh, in that time period, which um, I don't know. There's just a, a level there that that appeals to uh, to just my sense of uh, of campy yet. Uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, yet almost artistic works. Okay. Well, and I myself, I, I remember uh, grabbing a copy of uh, uh, the uh, the VHS from Blockbuster uh, back in the uh, uh, day of VHS stores, and uh, it uh, with its seediness and whatnot. And I remember. Uh, I know that uh, that to me, uh, when I was younger, it definitely felt like uh, I was wa uh, watching a magician that just uh, wanted to horrify you each time with uh, uh, the uh, the deaths that uh, that he was having to portray, uh, portray to those who he had to illusionize. So uh, to me, it, it kind of had an effect because it was was definitely an earlier gore splatter uh, 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 splatter film, and uh, a lot of people believe that uh, Herschel Gordon Lewis was the godfather of gore. So um, I definitely had an earlier experience with uh, him, but recently Italy, watching it, um, I I just loved uh, whenever. Um, Ray, the character who played uh, the magician, um, when he got on uh, on stage and he had he had that speech uh, where he had to mystify the audience. I thought I thought that was just a, a, a part of the grand illusion in its own self. And I think even though it was done in the seventies, it was it, it has definitely held up really well. And I. I think I was wa watching the behind the scenes of the film um, uh, uh, just a little bit with the audio, uh, audio commentary, and uh, they said that um, the, that cemetery scene where the um, coffin was kind of coming up out of the ground, that um, uh, they had actually lost the negative to the original film con uh, content, so, uh, so uh, they're actually kind of surprised that that element of the film actually survived and uh they were actually carry without permission but they were able to film the shots that uh, that they were uh, were able to so um anyone else have anything well basically that's uh like the first movie that i saw that was b horror or uh and it really got me into the genre when i was a young kid and i continue to enjoy those films today now, I always think back about when I first saw that film and how happy I was. I was kind of into magic, playing little tricks and stuff, card games, stuff like that. And then, obviously, he was the illusionist, right? So just portrayed to be a magician, maybe. But uh, that, that is definitely one of the films that got me into watching the low-budget type horror movies that I still watch today. And I enjoy when I can find and come across a, uh, a newer one that kind of, like, doesn't try too hard to be funny and make jokes. But, it, you know, because that, that movie definitely is, was real gory for its time. And, and it's just a lot of fun to still watch it. Celeste, um, uh, did you have a favorite scene from the film that you wanted to uh, explain? I actually really just like the deaths, uh, the original ones on stage. I thought they were cool, even though the effects were awful. Um, I thought <laughs> they were fun. I made me smile. <laughs> Uh, um, uh, 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 what uh, was there a favorite scene that you li uh, uh, liked from the film? Me, Who, me? Who? Brandon. Oh, ah, me. Um, I actually really liked the setup to it with the uh, with the monologue that was done at the very beginning. To me, I feel like horror is missing that a lot these days because that's how they used to do it back in the old days. Is they would, they would, or at least a lot of the classics would set it up that way, uh, where you have that sort of opening monologue that brings you into it. And uh, I mean, I, I just thought it was almost as mesmerizing as the character himself. 
as the magician himself. It was um, me a perfect setup for the film. Awesome, uh, Ron. Uh, did you have a favorite scene from the uh, uh, the Wizard of Gore that uh, you definitely loved and enjoyed? Um, there's a particular point where he's got two women on stage, and they're each you know, with their hands. Yes. There and everything, and he's like stabbing them, and they're, you know, and then the eyeball is good, and then the point where he has the whole huge go to the one woman who's playing with her entrails and things like that. And there's just a favorite quote from the movie that I've used on stage for myself. And it is, um, is that the one woman amongst you who find it not to satisfy fellow human beings lust for blood? I just love it when he puts that. Okay. Um, just uh, my favorite scene. I couldn't hear a damn word of that. Um, <laughs> Thanks for telling us, there, sick. Uh, was everybody else fine? What's wrong I with hear it. You hear? You heard him fine? Yeah. I, I had. I barely heard it. It felt like it was like coming from very far away. Yeah, it was like you, you were on the other side of the hallway. <laughs> okay, so I'm not losing my mind. Good. That that kind of fits in with the theme. Oh, you are. Uh, you might be losing your mind, but yeah, you lost that a long <laughs> time ago, man. Aww. Yeah, boy, you started talking with us. <laughs> well, at any rate, um, it's kind of hard to pick sort of a favorite. Um, like, um, hmm. I think kind of like the whole twist ending that they had would probably be what I what I would call like my favorite part of, of the whole thing, where it kind of went in a very different direction. Um, and it was like, wait, what's happening? Oh, okay. Um, because I had kind of my own suspicion that, like, at the beginning of the movie, when he cuts his head off on stage, I thought that he was somehow going to have been dead the whole time. Uh, I just saw dead and buried, like, four times. So that's kind of why. Um, but um, I, I, Alrighty. I did get a twist. So that was cool. Yeah. I think it was also kind of funny that... Uh, when you think about it and look back how that one guy was trying to say, like, you know, these are simple props and everything that he could go ahead and uh, do the tricks himself. And then you come to find out it's really real. But he was trying to go through the whole movie trying to say this is just a con man when he's actually slaughtering people. It's like in Dragon Ball Z when Hercules like, it's just a trick. His buildings are, like, exploding around him. Well, Celeste apologizes, but she must leave. Yeah, sorry I had to duck out, you guys. Was... So, uh, why don't you t uh, tell a little bit about wh uh, where you're from and what you do, and then uh, I'll let you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, I'm Celeste. I am one of the hosts of Deadger's Dark Coffin Classics. Of course, the main host being Deadger Winter, my favorite vampire. And I am also mm -hmm. the host of the Milwaukee Burlesque Troupe glamour junkies neo burlesque and if you don't know them or you're in the area check it out look them up on facebook also look up deggers dark coffin classics if you want to watch our shows go to vimeo.com slash ddcc it was lovely chatting with you all awesome thank you celeste Bye. for being on good night you have a good night sorry all righty so um Alrighty, so um, basically the sto uh, story of the uh, w uh, Wizard of Gore is uh, uh, basically w uh, where the uh, this mad ma uh, ma uh, magician is uh, up on stage and uh, he uh, puts you through like four deaths on sta uh, stage and uh, they end up becoming tr 
through. So um, it was definitely an interesting fil uh, film of its t uh, t uh, time. And uh, uh, d uh, does it hold up to this day? D uh, does anyone think it holds well? I, I say yes and no. I know you probably shouldn't answer it that, that way, but I think the way the film was made, I enjoy it because I, I consider that kind of a classic. It, yeah, it's not, you know, Frankenstein and the Wolfman and the Mummy, but it's a different type of classic to me. It could be because I was a kid when I saw it, so I, it just holds a special spot for me personally because uh, I, I used to enjoy going on Friday and Saturdays and renting those VHS tapes up there at the video store. <laughs> Here, too, I kind of remember the nostalgia of running up to the VHS story. Uh, oh, here's 2001 Maniacs. Uh, uh, you know, coming back home and sticking it in the uh, 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 tape, uh, having always having to rewind it because nobody rewound it. <laughs> or rewinding the death scenes over and over. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. Um, Ron, um, uh, yeah. uh, what do you think? Do you think that uh, the film holds up to this day? Well, yeah, it really does, I think, because I think, you know, it. even though the effects are not up to snuff today, I think taking it in that context of what everybody was saying, in that time period, in that specific filmmaking era, and considering it was from Herschel Burn Lewis, the godfather of gore, kind of the beginning of that and it's it, it is it has this kind of classic patina you know, that, you know, that intended at the time of its of its making and release but now You know, as something you know from that year. At a certain time, but it, it lives on in its campiness and uh, and primitive gore effects. You know, it let it work. You know? Most definitely. Yeah. So. Uh, Dustin, um, what did you th think? Did you uh, think that uh, it held up, or uh, I, I gather that uh, that you didn't like it at all? <laughs> oh no, um, I mean I thought it was fine. I definitely seen worse movies. I mean somebody convinced me to see Rogue One, <laughs> um, but uh, well, by, by the fourth uh, by the fourth act, I was kind of like okay, we've seen basically the same scene like four times, like what's a little bit more? And that had some yeah, there surprises was. in it, so. But um, overall, yeah, I mean, it, it held up fairly well. Um, it was neat. I mean, yeah, a lot of the effects looked fake, but there was just something about the way the concept played out that was still... It was still upsetting, and that's pretty hard for a horror movie to do for me at this point. So, I mean, I'd say it was effective, and while it's, while it's very obviously fake, it does hold up to some degree. So I, I would recommend it if you were in the mood for, like, a splatter movie. Okay. Alrighty. So uh, let's wrap this uh, uh, show up here. Um, uh, my, uh, go ahead, um... Ron, uh, at the end of the show, we uh, we want to uh, tell a little bit uh, what, uh, what we do. Your, uh, I figure you can tell us. Uh, uh, you're Ron Fitzgerald. You know, uh, you're an actor, and this is, uh, 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 you know. So go ahead, tell us a little bit about yourself at the end here, so that the audience can. We'll wrap this up here. Can you hear me? Are you alive, Ron? Maybe you stepped out to take a leak. Dun, dun, dun. Well, the last time he tried to talk, he was like, well, and then there was like a train noise. And all I heard was like a train whistle for 
20 seconds. But that's unfortunate. I actually remember seeing him in a couple movies um, that they were talking about. Hmm. I want to check his movies out now. Like He seems like a pretty cool guy. <laughs> I've seen Blood Gnome. I actually really like that movie myself. Just the name Blood Gnome. Like I, yeah, that's it, why I saw it. It writes a pretty big check. Like Blood Gnome. Like because I, I'm thinking like I used to love David the Gnome. What did they do to David the Gnome? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh the little like cap. Anyways, they have is awesome. <laughs> Blood Gnome. Alrighty, um, uh, Brandon. Why don't you say a little bit about your uh, about yourself? Um, uh, what you do? Uh, well, uh, most of y'all know uh, already. Uh, but um, I'm a uh, I run a YouTube page uh, called Septum Sun versus the World. Um, we do movie reviews, uh, pick up videos, and uh, we talk about the upcoming uh, physical media releases uh, throughout the week. Uh, for those of you who um, know my wife, uh, who's been on the, the channel a couple of times now for uh, for here, uh, she actually did uh, fill in for my co-host uh, for the last week. So if any of y'all want to actually see her, she is in, that, uh, in the recent videos. Um, and uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Like, again, train. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I'm Dustin. I go to UWM. I study GIS and frogs. And I see far too many movies. Um, that's basically it. Uh, I love coming on and doing this, and I hope I wasn't too impatient tonight. <laughs> uh, and uh, Tino, uh, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I'm, I'm just your average, uh, average everyday guy. Just goes about his life trying to keep a smile on my face as things get us down. Uh, I, I usually do pretty good with that. I used to do movie reviews. I, I actually like to do reviews. I, I was trying to get uh, our boss here inside Movies Galore out of Milwaukee to set up something like that uh, for some more for a different type of review or collection reviews. Uh, I just want to see Dave succeed with what he's trying to accomplish here. I'm trying to help him along the way. Uh, everything with me is pretty good in my life, so I just like to help somebody else out. Awesome. And Ron, uh, hopefully you hear us or whatnot. I saw you just signed out and signed back in. Yeah. Um, I see. Um, I why don't you uh, t uh, explain yeah, a little bit uh, about, about what? He said fine. So, uh, why don't you explain uh, a little bit about yourself uh, at the end here? Um, and uh, can, uh, can uh, uh, know just a little bit about, about you at the end? Uh, yeah, I'm an actor and cosmic illusionist and uh, host for Dark Sticky Fun, the master of the dark realm. Uh, I, I, you know, like I say, I, I've been a gothic illusionist for a long, long time. I do a show that's all, you know, uh, it, it's uh, dark and macabre and influenced by, you know, horror and the supernatural and the occult and, you know, just dark culture fun and, you know, the goth industrial subculture. It's all about that. And... And it's really fun and has a great sense of humor to it as well, you know, dark, uh, wicked humor. And that then led me into horror films, and I've acted, been acting horror films for, you know, uh, the last, you know, 15 years or so. <laughs> and, uh, you, you know, it's great fun. You can find me at FitzgeraldRealm.com. You can find things about uh, Dark Realm, uh, which is on Amazon Prime, at uh, DarkRealmMovie.com. And you can also find me on, you know, all the regular social media, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And uh, uh, it's, you know, it's good, dark, sticky fun. So if you like dark, weird things, you know, that's kind of what I'm doing. You know? Any, awesome. any questions? I'll take any questions from you about this. Um, does anybody have any questions for, uh, for um, uh, Iran before, uh, before the end of the show? Can you send me a list of the things that you've talked about that are on Amazon? Uh, <laughs> I have a lot to keep track of. But yeah, oh, yeah. it was a little bit. There's there are three of them on there. I can yeah, I can definitely. Um, 
I it, tried to friend you, so that should that should work. Did you? Okay, thank you. I was going to say, I, if we can connect, uh, then I can send you a list because there's there's three of them that are on there and two of them are on Prime. So I'll make sure to you know I'll find you in the um in the uh, app request and then we'll get uh, get connected and I'll send you those movies. Thank you. I remember Blood Gnome, but it's going to be hard to forget the phrase Blood Gnome. It is, but that's not on The three that are on Prime are, um, uh, well, the, the two that are on Prime are Dark Realm and Arkham Sanitarium Soul Eater, but also on Amazon Video, but it is it is a, uh, a, a film that everybody you know can rent or, or, or purchase, uh, and that one is Magus. That's a that's a really good film, but it's not part of Prime, but it is on Amazon Video. So those are the three that are up there on Amazon. Okay. So um, oh, and my, any, and my anything, name. Go ahead, you can find the disc on Amazon proper on Amazon.com. You can find the disc to any of those movies. You can find the DVD to all of those things. Oh, I see. Awesome. And my and name is David Streggy. Oh, oh, go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry, David. And my name is just trying to add that. No, Chaos. no problem. <laughs> and my name is David Streggy. I run Movies Galore of Milwaukee, a group uh, that's on Facebook as well as a blog site. Um, I I also uh, uh, host this along with uh, my fellow cohorts, and uh, I. Uh, I'm also a somewhat small-time producer, and I, I, I like last episode, I can now say that I'm uh, uh, one of the executive producers behind Wrestle Massacre, uh, which will be coming out in uh, 2018 with Brad Twig. So, um, and uh, so, thank you for coming on the show. I'm sorry if we had some audio interference, but uh, but. Uh, that happens when you have more than one per, uh, person on this uh, uh, thing. But I hope that you had fun, Ron. I did. And thank you again for having me on. And, and thank you for the rest of you guys for, for joining us. Uh, and to Celeste as well, who already had to go. And, and for everybody who, who's listening uh, now with us tonight or, or finds this later and listens in, uh, thanks so much for, for hanging out with us and uh, enjoying the show. And, and David, thank you again for having me on. I'll, you know, I, I hope to come back again sometime and, uh, you know, uh, you know, if you feel like reviewing Dark Realm or something else I'm in, you know, let me know. We'll, <laughs> we'll hook you up. You could e even uh, join us on a discussion uh, if I'd, you ever wanted to. I'd love to. Yeah, I, I had fun tonight talking about The Wizard of Gore. So, um, and I, you know, and listening to you, one, of your, one of your other shows, uh, I like the discussion of the film a lot. So I think it's a fun roundtable to talk about, you know, cool films. So absolutely, I'll come back again sometime. Thank you. Most Brad. definitely. All righty. Hopefully, you uh, you listeners out there stay tuned. Uh, next week uh, we have a discussion on uh, George Romero's uh, uh, Night of the Living Dead, and then uh, following that uh, on Wednesday night, uh, I have an interview with Darren Wood, who's uh, uh, directed Planet of the Vampire w uh, Women, Monster fr uh, from Bikini Beach, and Badass Monster Killer. Followed by a discussion on John Carpenter's The Thing. Dude, sorry, Dan, you're still in pieces. Uh, we'll catch you on ne uh, next episode. Catch you later. We'll just put him back together.